This is Jack from Tofluency.com and welcome to episode 5 of the Tofluency podcast. Now today we're going to talk about American English and if you know anything about me or if you understand accents, you'll know that my accent isn't American English. It is British English. Now it used to be stronger. It used to be more regional to the north of England, but after living abroad for 12 years now and being an English teacher, I feel like my accent has become a little bit more neutral. But after 10 years of living in the United States, there are certain words and phrases that come from the US that I now use automatically. And I never thought that I was going to do this. I always thought I was going to just stick to the British version and that would feel normal. But what's interesting is that the examples from today's podcast, these all just sound normal to me now. So after immersing myself in the US for 10 years, these words and phrases are just natural to me. However, there are also six examples here of words um, and also some phrases too that I still use the British version and that feels normal to me too. And I don't know the pattern. I don't know the reason why some vocabulary, I use the American version and some I just use the British, but it just comes out automatically now. Some of these examples are quite obvious. You might know the first one. We'll get the first one out of the way, which you'll, you'll know already. But some of them are really interesting and a little bit more obscure. Okay, so before we get started, go to tofluency.com to get your free book, The Five-Step Plan for English Fluency. And also check out the podcast description because I'll leave the examples and some more information about this down below. So you can read the examples there if you need to. And one last thing, I do want to talk a little bit about the difference in pronunciation. Because what I notice with a lot of people who move from the UK to America, that they start changing the way they speak slightly, especially when they are surrounded by Americans. And the first thing that I think that changes is the T sound. In American English, if there are two vowels either side of a T, it often becomes a D. For example, butter, becomes butter, butter, butter. So you can hear the D sound. And my wife, Kate, she sometimes goes by Katie. I say Katie, but other people say Katie, Katie. But the focus today is on vocabulary. And let's, again, let's just get this first one out of the way. Soccer, soccer. This is my favorite sport. I grew up playing football in British English. But this is a word that I now just use all the time in the US, so I just call it soccer. But what's interesting is I still call American football, American football. But people in the US just call it football. But this just comes out automatically. I say, you know, which American football team do you like? And they say, oh, you mean football. <laughs> but soccer, this just, I never thought I was gonna say soccer because there's a big thing in the UK about not calling it soccer. It's football, you have to call it football. But now it just comes out automatically. I wish there were an international word for this that was just used everywhere and it would be the same in all English speaking countries, but this is still an issue. This still causes confusion. If I call it soccer to my British friends, then they tease me. If I call it soccer in the US, they say, oh, don't you call it football? And there's never an easy way to describe my favorite sport, which I talk about all the time. The next two are baby related. And I think I just automatically use Americanisms and American terms when it comes to baby stuff, because I had babies in the US and I didn't have them in the UK. But the next two are diaper, and stroller. And diaper in British English is called nappy, a nappy. And a stroller in British English it is, I'm gonna to have to look it up. That's it, of course, a pram. It's called a pram. 
So uh, a diaper or a nappy is what you put on a baby so that they can go to the potty in their pants. And a stroller is what you put a baby or a kid in to wheel them around, to push them around. So a stroller in American English and a pram, that's it, a pram in British English. So again, diaper, stroller, they just sound natural to me now. I don't think about the British version. Now the next one is something that I'm not proud of. And this is impossible to avoid, I think, if you live in the USA. And it's the word like, like. Americans use this all the time, like. A lot of the times people use it as a filler. So I was like pretty tired like the other day and I don't know, like, yeah. You hear people say that. So they use it as a filler. It's also used all the time in this phrase, I was like, I was like, which means either I said or I thought. So it could mean something you said or something you thought in that moment. An example, I was standing in line and somebody came over and pushed me and I was like, what are you doing? And this could mean and I said, what are you doing? Or I thought, what are you doing? And this is something that I thought I would never say. But usually, maybe after I've had a couple of drinks, I say it. It comes out of my mouth automatically. And it's something I'm trying to avoid because I don't like it. But maybe I just need to live with it now. Number five is something that is specific to grammar tenses. And I've talked about the difference between the present perfect and the past simple on my YouTube channel. Search for To Fluency Jack on YouTube if you want to watch my lessons there. But I've often said the way to use the present perfect is if something could still continue in the time frame, then use a the present perfect. If it's something that can't continue it, it's over, like yesterday, this morning, etc. If it's finished, then use the past simple. For example, I've had two cups of coffee today. I had three cups of coffee yesterday. Yesterday, in the past, past tense. Today, hasn't finished yet. I could still have more coffee, the present perfect. But you'll often hear people in the USA did you have breakfast yet? Did you have breakfast yet? Not, have you had breakfast yet? And I have noticed myself using this tense in this sense. Did you have breakfast yet? Did you see that film yet? Did you go out yet? So this is something that I've seen creep in, which means slowly come into my way of speaking over the years. And again, after 10 years of living here, it's funny what seems natural to me now. And this, again, this tense, when I heard people say this in the past, I, I didn't quite understand what they were trying to say. I just worked it out because obviously they're talking about something specific, but now it just feels normal. The next one is a question that you're going to ask in bars, in restaurants, and coffee shops and places like that when you are ordering something. And it's this phrase, can I get? Can I get a coffee, please? Can I get the salad? Can I get the special? Can I get two beers, please? And again, this is something that is more American. I did just read though that it's becoming more popular with the youth of the UK. But growing up, we would say, can I have? Can I have two coffees, please? Can I have a couple of beers? Can I have the salad? This is just a great phrase to know. If you're going to the UK, say, can I have? If you're going to the US, say, can I get? But probably when I go back home, I'm going to use this when I go back home. Can I get? And the people working might just give me a little bit of a strange look. The next one is another one you might know, and it's chips. And you can think of fish and chips in the UK. And um, just on a, a side note, on a tangent, 
they don't really make good fish and chips in the US. When you get them, they're, they're very different. They're so much better in the UK. And my, my wife didn't believe me until she got them the last time we were in the UK. And she said, she said, oh my God, these are amazing. Something like that. But she really liked them. But anyway, chips are fries in the US. And chips in the US, if you order chips in the US, you're getting crisps, like a packet of crisps. And again, now I just use chips. I was speaking to my mum today and I said chips and meaning crisps. And they had to ask me the question, well, which one do you mean? The US chips or the British chips? And yeah, again, it just feels natural. Fries, I say fries. My kids order fries all the time. So it's something that comes natural to me as well. Now, speaking of food, this one is something that you can use when you want food delivered and it's takeout to get takeout. In the UK, you would say to get takeaway. Let's order a takeaway tonight. In the US, let's order takeout tonight or let's get takeout. Now this is 2021 and over the past year, for obvious reasons, a lot of people are starting to get takeout more and more. And there are the apps to do this now. But what surprises me is that people are using apps for takeout just to get one cup of coffee. And it, apparently it's really common now where people are ordering Starbucks coffee and getting, I think mainly on Uber Eats, which is an app here, like Uber, the car, but now they do food delivery. And they're ordering just one cup of coffee for the coffee costs $3 and then it's $5 delivery. I find that really strange, but apparently it's really common. Now, the last one before we talk about the ones that I don't use here is gas and gas station. Now, the equivalent in the UK is petrol and petrol station. But when I'm speaking automatically with friends, I just use gas and gas station. And this seems better to me now. It just sounds more natural. So we stop at a gas station to get gas. All right, let's talk about ones that I just don't use. And the first one is really confusing. It's not logical at all. Now, this is an idiom. And in the UK, when you're not interested in something, you could say, I couldn't care less. I couldn't, I couldn't care less about football, which isn't true, but just an example. I couldn't care less about whatever is happening. Or someone says, oh, I have some gossip about my, my housemate. Oh, I couldn't care less, which means you're not interested. And it makes sense. I couldn't care less. So it's not possible for me to be less interested. In the US, they say, I could care less. I could care less. Not everyone, but it's really common. And I never understand why they have this version here. Because I know it's an idiom, but or an expression, but you're you're saying that you could actually care less, which means you are interested in it. Or you have some interest in it. So it doesn't make any sense to me. The next three are all the way that you actually say the word. So the next one is yogurt. Now, in American English, it's yogurt. And no matter how many times I've heard this, it still seems really strange to me. And it doesn't sound good, let's say. It just, it just doesn't sound good. Yogurt, yogurt. So I always say yogurt. And I say it quite strongly too. The other one in this little mini three list is tomato. Tomato, tomato. So I always just say tomato instead of tomato. And the next one's funny because when I said it the other day, I was thinking this must sound really strange to people. And it's water bottle, water bottle. Now we talked about the D's before, how a T becomes a D. And I'll try and say this in my best American accent. People here say water bottle. <clears throat> Sorry, I'll try that again. Water bottle, water bottle. I'm not that good at American English, but that's my best attempt. And you can notice the difference. Water bottle, water bottle. And the way I say it has that t, t, t. And people like to, to say Harry Potter instead of Harry Potter. And that's the way that they notice how um, it's said differently. Um, by the way, the other day I was at a party and um, 
a girl came up to me and said, you sound exactly like Harry Potter. I said, well, there's a little bit of a difference, but I, I know what you mean. But yeah, what water bottle, I can't say water. It just, it just doesn't come out. I feel like I'm mocking Americans or teasing Americans if I tried to say water, bottle. It just seems like I'm teasing them. Now, the next one is when you are at a grocery store, which again, seems natural to me now instead of supermarket. But here they will call it a shopping cart. Um, go get a cart to put the food in. I still say trolley, shopping trolley. You need to put the trolley back. Let's put the trolley back. And um, no matter how many times I've heard cart, it just doesn't sound right. Just doesn't sound right. And the last one is torch, torch. I still say torch and not flashlight. Flashlight. Bring the flashlight. Go get a flashlight. I don't like that word. I don't know why, again. It just doesn't seem right to me. So instead I say torch and it just comes out naturally. Even though I know they won't understand, it just still comes out of my mouth. Okay, so those are the Americanisms that I use and also the British versions that I still use, just to have a quick summary. Soc I'll try and do this in my American accent. Okay, you ready? Soccer, diaper, stroller, like, that was like. Did you have breakfast yet? That was bad. Can I get uh, <laughs> chips, fries, takeout, gas, gas station? And then the British versions that I still use, couldn't care less, yogurt, tomato, water bottle, trolley, torch. Those are the examples that I have for you today. Now, again, if you want to see these written down, just have a look in the description. And then I'll leave a link to an interesting video on YouTube where you can look at the difference between British and American English, a conversation that my wife and I had. Um, so go, definitely go check that out. And while you're checking things out and exploring the world of Tofluency, go to tofluency.com and click on the link that says free book and you can download my book, The Five Step Plan for English Fluency. And before you go, consider leaving a review if you are on a podcast platform. If you're listening to this on YouTube, then like that video and share it. And yeah, get in touch with me if you'd like to learn more. All right, thank you so much for listening and I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.